This is Ryan with Stonefly Aquatic Nursery. Today, we're gonna to be introducing our new series titled Aquatic Plants and Algae. What we do at Stonefly is grow native aquatic plants for habitat restoration, beautification, erosion control, nutrient abatement, uh, those types of things in, for lakes, ponds, and wetlands. Um, but this video, we wanted to do it to kind of show you guys what's there, not just native plants, but also invasive plants uh, that we come across. We are based in Texas, so most of our encounters are based off what we see within Texas, but that does not mean that these plants are not found outside of Texas. For example, American water willow has a native range that stretches from Texas into Canada, so don't think that it's not going to be outside of Texas or not in your state just because we talked about it here. So, First, we want to talk about the benefits of aquatic vegetation. The stems that are in the water column are going to provide uh, some housing, basically, for small invertebrates and bugs, which are inevitably going to be used as a food source by fish and waterfowl. Um, more directly, the seed production from a lot of these plants are going to be food for other waterfowl and other wildlife. So just from those two points, we have a direct and indirect benefit from the plants that we have <clears throat> growing in these lakes, ponds, and wetlands for our fish and wildlife. Uh, these three primary methods of uh, uh, re primary is maybe not the right word, but these three reproduction methods um, are kind of what we deal with the most, and those are runners, seeds, and rhizomes. We're going to kind of skip over seeds, uh, assuming that you have a base understanding of how seed reproduction works. Now, what runners are going to do is create a clone, which we call the, the daughter plant, uh, from a mother plant. And all that's really happening here is that clone is reproduced, or that clone is produced by the mother plant. The mother plant kind of helps it along to get it to a point where it can handle its own and start making its own seed, creating its own runners. And this is just a way that plants can spread relatively quickly alongside their seed production. Eelgrass and Sagittarius both do this. Rhizomes are another form that they uh, plants will use to kind of help spread and uh, extend the range of where they're living within a localized area alongside seed production. So important to remember that these plants are also using seeds to spread. It's not just uh, through these runners or rhizomes. So when you think of rhizomes, think of irises. Um, even uh, the aquatic irises we have use rhizomes to spread as well. Lilies also utilize uh, very similar structures. And what we're going to have from this rhizome are roots that are going to go down or leaves that are going to come up helping create food for that plant to create more rhizome to spread via that rhizome and then also to create those seeds. <clears throat> our last slide here is going to round out the intro into our growth forms. We have floating plants, submerged plants, and emergent plants. The one that's not on, not on this slide are algaes because they're kind of a mix of all those kinds of things. And we'll talk about that in our uh, later videos. But our floating plants are going to include duck weeds, water meals. The submerged plants are going to be our eelgrasses, and uh, coontail, those types of plants. And then our emergents are going to be our Sagittarius, Cannas. They're to these plants are typically growing in two to four inches of water or what, something like that, you know, what have you. Um, so hopefully this intro is helpful, gives you a little bit of background for the videos that are to come. If you liked it, please like it. Uh, if you didn't like it, I'm sorry, let me know what was so awful about it so I can fix it in later videos. Um, and if you have any comments or questions, please let us know down in the comments section. And thank you for watching.